Hello children and welcome to another Lockdown Sunday School. We're really pleased that you continue to tune in and watch uh, Sunday School on YouTube. Uh, we've got a really exciting Sunday School this week. We're going to continue our story on Joseph. So I hope you've got your Bibles with you. So you'll need your Bibles for our Bible reading in a moment. So if you haven't got them, perhaps now is the best time to go and grab them. Then we'll, we've got our lesson and then we'll have a memory verse. And we've also got our last instalment of In the Snow with Ben. So let's start our Sunday School in prayer, as we always do. And this week we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Now, this is a prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. So let's close our eyes, concentrate and put our hands together. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. So we often link the Lord's Prayer to our story. So this week, our lesson is going to be on temptation. We learn what temptation Joseph uh, had and how he dealt with it. But temptation, what does it mean? It can be a tricky word to describe, can't it? But temptation is perhaps best described as a desire to do something that is unwise or wrong. So. As an example, it could be perhaps we've been tempted to take more sweets than we're offered. Perhaps we're tempted to push or shove one of our brothers or sisters. So the temptation is the thought of doing it, not the acting in carrying it out. But how do we know what's right and wrong? Ah, that reminds me of a song that we often sing. Now I know you will not need the words to this song because I know most of you know it off by heart. So let's sing our Ten Commandments song. Before we learn our lesson this week, let's recap on what we've learned about Joseph so far. So Joseph, he was the son of Jacob and he had 11 brothers. Now Joseph, he was considered favoured, wasn't he, by his father and his father brought him that multicoloured coat. Well, I think he was favoured because he loved the Lord. We found that out, didn't we, in our first part, that Joseph loved the Lord Jesus and obeyed his commandments and his brothers didn't like the fact that Joseph was was so so good. Joseph was also a dreamer. Can you remember some of the dreams that he dreamt? How his brothers would one day bow down to him? Well we'll have to wait in a few weeks time to see if this part of Joseph's dreams comes true. And then we learnt last week Poor Joseph didn't have a very good time, did he? His brother's anger grew and grew, and they even plotted to kill him. They threw him in that pit and wanted to deceive their father by saying that 
an animal that had attacked him. But he wasn't killed, was he? Some Midianites took him as a slave and took him to Egypt. So this week, we'll find out what happens to Joseph in Egypt. So let's get our Bibles ready because we're now going to hear our Bible reading. So children, I hope you've got your Bibles with you and you can follow the reading uh, as it's being read to you. And it's going to be taken from Genesis and chapter 39. Now, Genesis is in the Old Testament of the Bible and it's the first book, so it should be really easy to find. So let's follow the reading and listen to what the Lord has to say to us. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed Egypt blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favoured. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath unto my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, ne neither hath he kept back anything from me, but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house wherein of the house there within, and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me, and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So children will have our lesson now. Now lesson is being brought to us by Mr John Smith this week. So I hope you're sitting nicely and you've got your ears open so let's learn what our lesson is about this week so this week we're carrying on with our series about joseph if you remember that last week you learned that his brothers had sold him to some traders some midianites and this week we're going to learn about what happened to him when he got to egypt and how he behaved so there we are there's the midianite traders and they're heading off to egypt and that they were taking Joseph with them because his brothers had sold him. How do you think he felt as he was taken further and further away from home then? I'm sure he was worried, but God was with him. Did he wonder whether God had forgotten him? I guess he remembered the dreams he had and he wondered if it was all a mistake. Perhaps those dreams didn't mean that his family would one day think he was the most important in the family. Perhaps he'd upset his brothers for nothing. Perhaps he was being taken away just because he was proud of some silly dreams. Perhaps he'd never see his father again just because he got excited about something when he was wrong. I'm sure he must have thought all these things. But God was with him and God doesn't abandon his people when they get into difficult situations. Now when he got to Egypt... He was taken to a market to be sold. Well, that doesn't say in the Bible he was taken to a market, but he was certainly sold as a slave. It would be very difficult. He wouldn't understand what was going on. He wouldn't understand the language. And he was bought by the chief of the guards, perhaps the head of the army. His name was Potiphar. He was in charge of the king's bodyguard. He had been a wealthy man. He had had some land, a nice house. And there'd have been plenty of work for Joseph to do. He was taken back to Potiphar's home. He wasn't paid to work. He was a slave. He was under the control of his owner. 
He had to do exactly what he was told to do. And he wasn't to expect to be paid. Probably wasn't given that much food either. But then the Bible tells us the Lord was with Joseph. And God is everywhere at the same time. It doesn't mean that God is just there, but it means that God helped Joseph. He had to learn a new language to start with. Then he had to learn new ways of doing things. But God helped him, and not only that, God reminded him how he should live, and what he should and what he shouldn't do. You see, Joseph hadn't got the Bible to read. The Old Testament wasn't even written then. But he prayed to God, and God answers prayer, and he knew God as his own God. And he had a conscience. You've got a conscience. It's that thing inside you that tells you when you know you're doing wrong. God's given everyone a conscience. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us what work Joseph did, but it does say that he was with him. So all the difficulties he was in, Joseph still prayed to God, and he believed that things weren't under control, were not out of control. He worked for Potiphar for about 10 or 11 years. And he would have started perhaps with the harder jobs, digging or ploughing or cleaning the house and carrying heavy loads. But because God blessed Potiphar's house because Joseph was there, Potiphar and the slave masters began to notice that Joseph was trustworthy and reliable. He was a good worker. Didn't leave things not done just because he saw nobody was looking. Well, Potiphar got to know Joseph and began to trust him. It says in the Bible, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all that he did to prosper. He made him the chief servant over his house. Everything that Potiphar had in the house was left to Joseph to do and to manage. And because Potiphar trusted Joseph, God made Potiphar's business to go well as well. So Joseph then was put in charge of all the land as well and he learned all about farming and you need to remember that for late lessons later in the series while Potiphar was away guarding the king Joseph was at home looking after his house Potiphar's wife took a bit of a fancy to him that was very wrong she was married to her husband and she was not faithful to Potiphar her husband she wanted Joseph to be a bit like a husband to her when Potiphar was away. Joseph knew that was very wrong and he told her so. Every day though, she kept tempting Joseph and every day he told her no, that was wrong. Your husband has left everything in the house and in the land. He's left it all to me to control. Only you, his wife, as he kept to himself, because that's how it should be. I can't do this thing and sin in the sight of God. He realised, you see, that even though his dad and his brothers were a long way away, he was still in God's presence. Well, that really annoyed Potiphar's wife because she couldn't get what she wanted. And one day when he was in the house, she grabbed hold of his cloak and she asked him again, and Joseph ran outside, leaving the cloak behind. She was so annoyed that she shouted as if Joseph had attacked her. The other servants came in and she claimed that Joseph had tried to attack her and she had fought him off. And in fighting her off, fighting him off, she grabbed hold of his cloak and had run away without it. She wasn't a very truthful woman, was she? When Potiphar came back later in the day, she showed him Joseph's cloak, told him the lie about Joseph, said that he had tried to attack her, and that when she shouted for help, all the other servants came rushing in and she managed to fight him off and he ran away, leaving the cloak behind. Potiphar was furious. Joseph had been in charge of everything he owned, and now he, there he was, wanting his wife as well. Or so he'd been told. 
he went and found Joseph. The Bible doesn't tell us that Potiphar asked the servants or Joseph whether he was being told the truth. But it tells us that he threw Joseph in prison. And there he was. And we read elsewhere in the Bible that Joseph was chained up and he had fetters on his feet. All that because of something he hadn't done. Joseph had done nothing wrong whatsoever. He found himself being punished. Do you think for anyone else in the Bible that was like that? Anybody else who was punished for something he hadn't done? I'll give you a clue. That's right. Jesus never did anything wrong. He never sinned, never said anything, did anything, thought anything wrong, ever. But he was punished on the cross for the sins of all his people. Do you know him as your saviour? Have you asked him to take away your sins? He promises that if you ask him, he will. So thank you, John, for bringing us our lesson this week. Now, Joseph was strong to say no, wasn't he? He was, he did well to resist that temptation. And you know, the Lord wants us to be just like Joseph, to resist temptation. When temptation comes our way, we just need to say no. Perhaps remembering the Bible verse would be a good way to avoid temptation. Now it's our memory verse time now. So if you look in your Bibles at James and chapter four and verse seven, you'll find our memory verse. So let's have some help to try and remember it. We'll then go into our song, trust and obey, because I think Joseph did trust the Lord Jesus when he was tempted. He trusted God that if he resisted, he would be looked after and he did obey God's word, didn't he? He obeyed one of the 10 commandments by resisting the temptation that was put before him. So after our song, we'll also hear from Ben in our final instalment of the talks in the snow. So let's have our memory verse. We'll then sing our song, Trust and Obey, and then we'll have Ben with his final talk. So children, for being really good with your homeschooling this week, you can take a sweet. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. Come on, all of them. All of them. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. to our third and final lesson from the snow. In the first week we heard a verse from Isaiah that showed us that uh, if our, though our sins be 
um, like Scarlet, uh, Ruinous and, and Sinful. Um, they can be made white like snow. Last week we heard about snowflakes and this week I've got a science experiment for you. Now many of you know I'm not a scientist so I hope this goes well but we'll see and we'll see if we can learn a spiritual lesson from it. Well if beside me there is a bird bath and as you can see the bird bath is all frozen over. Uh, it's completely solid, the water is frozen and as many of you I'm sure know because we've got a lot of clever boys and girls in our Sunday school water freezes at naught degrees Celsius but apparently and we're going to try this out if you add salt to water or to ice it lowers the the freezing point to below naught degrees so that the the ice will melt to we see if that works I've got some salt here I'm going to tip it on I'm going to see what happens it's why of course they put grit salt on the roads now you may be able to hear the ice is beginning to crack and as you can see on the top of the ice pools of water are starting to form can you see there that the salt is lowering the boy at the freezing point of the water that forms up the ice and therefore the ice is melting it's turning back into water let me show, try and show you you can see on there pools of water now the ice is uh, melting because of the salt how can we learn a spiritual lesson from that well there's a verse in the new testament that tells us that as christians and i trust boys and girls that you will be a christian if you're not already we are the salt of the earth we uh, the gospel more more so than us is the salt of the earth it gives its uh, flavor it gives um, hope and light and life and um, the ice if you imagine it it's a hard um, a hard substance isn't it it's a hard and um, uh, not useless a material but it's less useful isn't it than water which is useful for drinking and for doing all sorts of things with uh, but the, the salt it creates the water it, it melts the ice to uh, turn it back into its liquid form from its solid form and you know there's lots of verses in the bible that we could uh, apply to that about the gospel we learn in the bible that our hearts in their natural state are are stony they're hard a little bit like the ice in the in the bird bath uh, but when the gospel comes in, when the salt and light of the gospel come in, our hearts, our stony hard hearts, are replaced with flesh, with um, life, with light. Our lives are changed. And then as Christians, we go on to be salt and light in the world. We are to set forth the gospel. We are to teach the gospel to others. Others should see the gospel uh, through us in our lives through the way that we live and through our words as well and you know that's what we seek to do at Sunday school we seek to be salt and light we seek to teach the gospel that your hard heart in its natural state uh, would be softened and replaced with a heart um, of flesh well let's have a look at the, the bird bath again there's a lot more water now uh, forming as you can see my science experiment has worked and we've been able to apply a spiritual lesson um, from the salt. The gospel uh, is light and it's life and it changes our hard stony hearts into hearts of flesh that are useful to God and he can use. Well, I've enjoyed these lessons in the snow and I've delivered them very poorly really. Um, but perhaps you could ask your uh, Sunday school, your normal Sunday school teacher when you next see them um, or ask somebody to show you in, in your Bible these lessons for yourself and I trust and hope and pray and we all do that you uh, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, yourself. So children that brings us to the end of another online Sunday school. Poor Joseph. First he was thrown into a pit by his brothers then he was sold as a slave and now he's been thrown into prison. Whatever could happen to him next? Well, 
We'll find out next week in our next instalment of the Joseph story. But let's close Sunday school in prayer. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank thee once again that we're able to learn more about you. We thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross. Lord, we thank you that you forgive sins. O oh Lord, we pray that you would lead us not into temptation, that you would indeed deliver us from evil. Lord, we pray that you would be with us this week and keep us safe. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen.